Good morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Minister Paul. It's May 15th, 2013. How many people know that on May 14th, uh, 1948, Israel became a nation? And this morning we lift Israel up in prayer and we bless them. Um, it's a powerful thing because it fulfilled Bible prophecy and began the prophetic time clock for us to go home. Thank you, Jesus. May 14th. 2013 so the Lord has given you a message today and I'm just gonna go right into it because there's a lot to cover you're gonna need a Bible and there's gonna be a lot of scriptures I had a beautiful day last day a powerful uh, time in the Lord gave a testimony how many people know that your life should be a living testimony of God's goodness and mercy and grace that's why in Revelation 12, 11, it says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Now, how are you going to have a testimony if, if you don't go through something and come out of it through Christ and then tell others about it? So that's what I did yesterday, and I had the, one of the best days of my life. And... Before I went to bed, I checked about five different channels. You know, there's certain channels I'll just check on every now and then that I pray for. And it seems like the, the main theme right now, uh, currently, is that these prophecies and so-called, and this is a direct quote, there is no such thing as modern day prophets. There's no new such, there's no new thing as prophecy. And this is the theme of several. These dreams and visions people are having are unbiblical. It is like, how do you address that? When somebody says, you know what, you, you can't have dreams or visions. That, that's not of God. It's all in your head. When the Bible clearly states in both the Old Testament and the New Testament in, in Joel 2 and Acts 2 that in the last days and we are in the last days he will pour out his spirit that's a holy sovereign spirit on all flesh and we will do what? have dreams and visions and prophesy that's Joel 2 and Acts 2 so how do you correct these people who just take it one, one part of the Bible and you know like go, they'll go to some old chapter in Ezekiel or Isaiah and just read one part of it and because they've been hurt by a church this is a pattern I've noticed and I would only speak on something that I've been through myself I was hurt by a church and I was in operating in offense and my whole you know it, it's it, my whole life became about my hurt against them that's called operating in offense now what does Christ say about operating in offense woe unto you who takes offense so these channels, I noticed that they just can't let it go. They can't let it go that maybe you did really have a dream. Maybe you really did have a vision. Maybe you really did have a prophecy. They, their, their channels are no longer about edifying the body, but they'll use the word too. It, it, their, whole, their whole, like I'm talking about like YouTube channels and Spreaker accounts and Facebooks, their whole, their whole devotion is to disprove visions, disprove dreams, disprove modern day prophecy. Everything they do is to disprove that. But in a way, are they trying to take away the very Holy Spirit power that God says we're to operate in? Are they edifying you? Because I turned my computer off last night after five of them in a row telling you you can't have dreams, you can't have visions, you can't have prophecies. I left their channels feeling down and gloomy. And, and then I realized, you know what, well that's not the Holy Spirit. Because if it was, I'd be uplifted and edified. So I prayed before I went to bed and I woke up. And God said, well, show them the whole world word. You know, not... Not just partial word. 
speak on it, correct them line upon line and precept upon precept where they err. My channel is about glorifying God. Anybody saying otherwise is a liar. Plain and simple. They're either deceived or lying because there's hundreds of people that will bear witness that they've been edified, uplifted, delivered, brought to salvation, uh, drawn closer to Christ, received gifts, been filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, from this ministry, they've been drawn closer to God, not leaving feeling farther from God. So, and I talk a lot about dreams and visions and prophecy. So, let's speak on this. And I'm going to do a second one maybe later today. We'll see how it goes because we're praying for Israel and the return of Christ and the salvation of our loved ones. In Romans 10, the whole thing is, 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 is basically about this. Uh, Israel needed the gospel of the resurrection. Um, matter of fact, it starts off, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. But they, they had a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. And then they rejected, they rejected the gospel. In Romans 10, Israel rejects the gospel. So now, I want to just, uh, this is going to be a second part, because uh, we're celebrating that today, Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came down after Christ rose. He said, look, I have to go. So you can receive this helper. And along with that was the Holy Spirit. And he rose. And when he rose, he told them to go wait in the upper room. This is recorded in Acts 2.38. And then he said, and you will receive power. Now there's too many ministries that are operating without any power. They're dead. And you can tell they're dead from the time you walk in. Whether it be an online ministry or a building. When you walk in. It's dead and you leave deflated. It's dead. You know why? Because there's no power in this church because the Holy Ghost is not operating in this church through the gifts. So I'm gonna, I've been talking on this for two years and I'm going to continue to talk about it. That Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you will be a bold witness. Now along with this power is called the Holy Spirit comes gifts. You cannot dispute this. So, and one of the gifts is teaching and preaching. That, you know, so, in, let's just, let me read this part to you in Romans 10 and 9, because this is what Israel did. They rejected that, that Christ could come down and, and um, fulfill the law and bring this new gospel of mercy and grace and love that you can be redeemed and saved forever and operate in the power of God. They were in bondage to the law and they rejected him. They rejected the gospel. And they're still in, in, in to this day in bondage to the law. So he says in Romans 10, um, four, 14, How then shall they call on him, that's Christ, how, how then sh shall they call on Christ in whom they have not believed? So how can Israel call on a Savior that they didn't believe in? Now watch this. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So somebody has to go out there and tell them about the Messiah, that he's real and he really does have power and he really still in 2013 gives gifts to men. And how shall they hear without a preacher well see you have to be sent and called as a preacher if you don't if you haven't been sent and called as a preacher then the anointing's not going to be on your life to preach what they need to hear that's where the power came from that's christ where i said don't even go out christ told them don't even go out until you receive this power and they didn't they did not go out. I'm talking about the 12 disciples and everybody that got in the upper room. They did not go out until they received the power. Now, once you got the power, you can go out in full authority with the gifts. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Sent by who? 
Christ in what? Power. So, I want to talk about the church of Ephesus and in Roman uh, in Revelation uh, 2 and 3, it talks about the seven churches and, and how the church of Ephesus and the, the letters to the Ephesians and in particularly um, what you see there uh, as the the title is uh, Hymenaeus and Philadius. I probably said that wrong. Let, let's address that because this is really on my heart. Let, let's go and I, I have links to, to everything we're going to discuss from here on out. We're talking about approved and disproved workers. And in 2 Timothy 2, we'll be reading for, from 14 to 26. It says, remind them of the... Now, I want at, from this point on in this teaching, I want everybody to know that Christ has been crucified. He's rose from the grave. The tomb is empty. He's been seen by man uh, after his... Uh, uh, arising he's told them to wait and go tarry for the Holy Ghost he has ascended into heaven and he's sitting in heaven now in full power and authority and he's now dispensed the same Holy Spirit that fell upon him when he was baptized he's now dropped on them in, in Acts 238 and they are out now operating in full power of the Holy Spirit and the nine gifts this has all occurred from this point on in the teaching. In verse 14, it says, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. In other words, don't sit there in a church or on a YouTube channel and hold a Bible up and begin to teach out of it in a way that does not please God and just hurts others. And causes them to stumble in their faith. If you don't know the word, you shouldn't be teaching it or preaching it. Because you haven't been sent. It's going to be a tough word, but it's going to be the truth. And I'm not saying I'm a teacher either. But if no one else is going to teach here uh, correctly on YouTube. To rightly divide the whole word of God. Not just bits and pieces of it. I'll get on here and do it. Praise God. 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God not man I'm see I'm not on here to uh, to to please uh, to what does it say to to be approved by man see I'm not living to be a man pleaser and clearly that's evident by now but to be a God pleaser I'm not going to shake my Bible in your face and say you know what you're wrong I'm just going to put this out to the whole word in but I'm going to do it in an order with the whole word not parts of the word, and, and, and then let you decide for yourself. Can we have dreams and visions? Can we prophesy? Can we have healings? Well, Jesus said we could. He said you're going to receive the power to do that. In Mark 16, a matter of fact, it's supposed to be a sign of them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. Well, was that just for then, and then we no longer have signs? Well, then you no longer believe. Let's bring some correction to this situation. So, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. This is on YouTube. This is on Facebook. This is on anybody that's given a platform to, 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 to speak the word of God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And shun profane and idle babblings. And there's too much babblings on the internet. You know, you know what it does? They increase to more ungodliness. In other words, that's what happened to me last night. After five of them in a row of them telling me what I can't do in Christ, rather than what I can do in Christ, uh, it just it, it just like decreased my faith and had me feeling bad, and I, I had to walk away from it. Well, that's you know why? Because I was just listening to idle babblings that were were incorrect and and unbiblical. But yet they were holding a Bible in their hand when they taught it. Their message will spread like cancer. Do you see it? On, it? It spread all over YouTube like cancer. And you know what? They're holding up a Bible saying Jesus Christ and hurting his followers. Let that sink in. 
Because you're going to stand one day. Every knee shall bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I don't want to be standing before him having uh, hurt. What does it hurt for someone to have a dream and vision to you, first of all? How in the world does that hurt you? It doesn't. There's, there's, a, there's a spirit of error there that, that it, it just needs to be addressed. Or it's going to, I'm, I'm putting, you know, we're going to terminate this cancer today in the name of Jesus. And the, the reference it gives is Hymenus and Philetus are of this sort who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already passed and they overthrow the faith of some. How, how would you like to be held responsible for overthrowing the faith of some? Well, you, did you know that, that these two men that you see in the title there, you know what they did? They were from Ephesus and they denied the resurrection. Go back to Romans 10. They were Gnostic uh, people that just sat there and they denied that the resurrection had occurred. I mean, that, that's pretty deep. And they, they were spreading that like a cancer. And you know what? These apostles received the power, the resurrection power, wonder working power of the Holy Spirit and corrected them. And they get mentioned a couple of times here. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that. They're mentioned there once. They're also mentioned again in 1 Timothy uh, 1 20. They're, they're mentioned, it says that they're shipwrecked. I mean, picture this. In regard to their faith, it says they're shipwrecked. Read 1 Timothy 1 20, and I'll try to put a link in that. Uh, he says, and matter of fact, the Apostle Paul says that he's delivered them, uh, Hymenus and Alexander, to Satan that they might not blaspheme. See, what they were, were heretics. I'm not, that's not my word. They were heretics. To preach anything other than Christ is risen is heresy. And with the risen Christ comes the Holy Ghost power. And also in 1 Corinthians 5.5, 5, Paul commands, commands the church on this matter. And I'll put a link. So are, when you deny the power of the Holy Spirit, then you also deny the resurrection because when Christ rose, he said you will receive power. So let, let's let's go to a couple of things that I've been talking about. Let me check the time here. I, I pray, Lord, let me let me let me preach this in a manner that's worthy to you. I'm going to read Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. Now he this is Jesus, capital H. So I'm going to, just going to say it like this. And Jesus himself gave some. Now notice it doesn't say everybody. You know, I don't consider myself a preacher or a teacher, but I, I'm rightly dividing the word of truth. He, he gave some to be apostles and some prophets. You know, now just hear me out on this, please. Please just hear me out. Some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now, there's pastors all over the world that they love. They hold up the Bible and they say, I like this pastor and I like this pastor. They love the evangelist and they support them and give them money to go all around the world. They love teaching. But you can't have half of this scripture. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to take Ephesians 4 and 11 because that's what... That's what uh, these heres heretics were doing. They were just taking half of the word. And they were condemned for it. Matter of fact, they were turned over to Satan and they were charged with hurting others' faith. So now I bring correction to you today on, on 5-15-2013 in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. To stop. A rebuke. Because you can't just say, well, we can have teachers and we can have evangelists and we can have pastors, but I'm going to omit and, and remove the apostle and prophet part. And why? And because this is, this is what Christ gave and you can't take it away. For the, Why did he do this? Now, please, like I said, hear me out. We're going to go from 11 to 15. Why did Christ, he's, he's building a church here. Because he went to heaven and ascended and he left the Holy Spirit 
And he told them to tarry in Acts 2.38, and the church was built. Now this church has to get it right. We'll go back to Revelation 2. So when he comes back, we're in unity. And until we're in unity, we're not right. And you know what it takes? It takes all of these ministries operating together as one in love to get it right. And you know how we do that? Through the Holy Spirit and his power in leading. So you cannot just remove prophet and apostle and say that we can have evangelists and pastors and teachers. Otherwise, you're omitting part of the Holy Word of God. 12. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Why would you want to hinder saints of God being equipped to fulfill the ministry so we can go home? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Why are you so against the body of Christ being uplifted. Because when I watch your channels, I'm not edified, I'm depressed. Just tell me, I'm not saying my channel is perfect. I'll be the first one in line to say, I got all kinds of issues I'm dealing with. My life's a mess. But when the power comes upon me, praise God, I can preach the truth and, and, and receive peace and love and joy. The fruits of the Spirit. It's the, you know where those you know where you know where peace and love and joy and patience and long suffering comes from the same Holy Spirit that you want to say can't give you those nine gifts you can have and you know what you'll notice these people preaching this they don't have they don't have peace they don't have love they don't have patience matter of fact they're angry and bitter because they've been hurt and I'm not here to condemn them because there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus I'm here just like Romans 10 is to get them to accept the truth and the truth shall set them free. And the truth is that there is nine fruits of the spirit and nine gifts of the spirit to build this church up, to edify you, to equip these ministries, to go around and preach the gospel to the whole world, to heal people, to set them free, to cast out demons freely. I've received freely give. These are gifts from God that this is going to go around the whole world. And then Christ is going to return and you are being a hindering to that. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I rebuke it. The 14. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and care. You're acting like a child. And, you're, and you're, the doctrine you're preaching is having people one day up and one day down wondering, scratching your head. Well, one person said I'm having a vision. Well, no, and not, no, you can't have a vision. One person is just completely trying to you know, share the, this beautiful rapture dream they had with everybody. And then the, they're teaching, well, you can't have these dreams. Well, the Bible says you can. Acts 2, Joel 2, you can. Are you just going to pretend you didn't see that part? I pray that your spiritual eyes be opened today and you don't go into 5-16-2013 preaching this heresy that you can't have the power of the Holy Ghost. Because you're being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine by the trickery man and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love. Now, this is what I'm doing. I don't have to do this. I don't want to do it. But God has asked me to speak this truth. And it, that's what this is, is the word of God. It's, it's the truth. And I'll put links to it for you to read. So why? So then we grow up in all things into him who is the head. Christ to to put this word out that there are these offices today or else the church would have been dead it never stopped the church isn't Christ hasn't came back from the church yet until then we're to to to, to go forward and come together in unity in those offices and I'm not going to allow anybody that comes upon my channel to be tossed to and fro by false winds of doctrine now let's go to 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, and let's talk about these gifts Christ gave to men. Because these are gifts of God, and they're free, and people can't receive them because you're telling them they don't exist. That's a hindrance and a stumbling block. Because you've been hurt. But don't take it out on others. Be set free. Receive them yourself, and then go tell others they can receive them too. That is the ministry. That's not my words, that's the holy word. Let's go through this. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 11. There are, starting at verse 4 in 1 Corinthians 12. There are diversity of gifts. So here, the gifts exist. First and foremost, they exist. 
but the same Spirit. And they come, they all come from the Holy Spirit that Christ promised. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. So you can have a prophetic ministry, you can have an evangelistic ministry, you can have a teaching ministry, but they all are under the same anointing, and they are all sent from the same Jesus of Ephesians 4.11, and they're not to be done in as heretics as these two uh, uh, hymenists were doing, uh, because they came from the Holy Spirit. They're, they're to work as one. I'm going to read that again. There are difference, differences in ministries. Your ministry doesn't have to be exactly like my ministry, but we are supposed to work together, not against each other. And this that's what I see is different ministries working against each other when Christ is at the door. It's insane. It's insanity. That is insanity. It's heresy. And it needs to stop now. The, but... It says, and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. So when you speak against these gifts and these visions and these dreams and these offices, you're speaking against the very Holy Spirit of God. Verse 7 in 1 Corinthians 12. But the manifestation of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will manifest itself. And when it does, things happen. And when you just because you're in a dead church, where the Holy Spirit ain't manifesting does not mean that you that, that you can go spread that to the whole world because it doesn't help anybody. Matter of fact, it hurts their faith. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So stop making it about you and make it about the ministry of spreading the gospel around the world because I want Christ to come back because this world is deceitfully wicked and full of evil and I've had enough of it and I have grandchildren in here that I don't want to come into this public school system that's full of de demon worshipers and child molesters. I want them to, I want Christ to come back and I want to go home and I want to take my grandchildren with me and I, you know, that's why I'm rebuking you because you are becoming a hindrance to the return of Christ. You, 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 you are a stumbling block to people. You're hurting their faith. And I want you to come into the unity. You're not into the unity of me. The unity of Jesus Christ and the body of Christ. Forget about me. Listen to the word. For the one is given the word of wisdom through the Holy Spirit. So there is a word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge through the same spirit. There is a word of knowledge. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Ten. To another, actually the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. And to another, different kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit that Christ Jesus promised works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he, capital H, wills. Not as you will, but as Christ wills. Not as me will, but his word says that these can happen. So what, what, what I see happening here in, in these end times, in the latter days, as they call it, right before the return of Christ, is they're allowing Satan to creep in through heresy and false teaching and every wind of doctrine and acting like a child. You know, because you haven't been sent trying to preach on something you know nothing about. Stumbling block saying, OK, well, yeah, I'd love to be healed because, you know, of course, Christ, he's the healer by and you quote this by his stripes, you are healed. Well, that is that right here is one of the gifts of healing. It's the same thing you did with Ephesians 4. You said, well, yeah, we can have pastors and we can evangelize. And we can teach, but we can't have apostles or prophets. Now in 1 Corinthians 12, it says that you can have faith, right? And you can have healings, but you want to remove the prophecy and the discernment and the tongues. You can't, you can't just pick and choose parts of the word. You have to put the whole word out or none of it. Other word, otherwise, it's heresy. Do you know anybody in your life like this? I'm not mentioning any names. I'm just telling you it's, it's rampant. I mean... Millions of people are doing this. 
And the Holy Word, they were, what do you, why do you think Paul wrote all these letters to all these uh, churches? Because they were out of line. I, I beseech you to stop in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. It's still running, so I'll keep talking. You cannot just move prophecy out of this and move tongues out of this and say you can have faith in healing because the truth is discernment in here tells me that there's something wrong with your teaching. So discernment's in there and faith is in there, but you want to pull out prophecy and tongues. You can't. That's not rightly dividing the word of God. Does that make sense? You are not rightly dividing the word of God when you pull out three of the five offices from Ephesians 4.11 and four of the nine gifts out of 1 Corinthians 12, then you are in error and someone has to come along and